Was this really hard to cook? It wasn't that hard to cook. It was actually a really fun process. It was, uh, was really fun to do, this album, yeah. Coming out as your second project, you decided to do the organ trio type of ensemble. What made you decide to do that? Well, it's first because I just love this, this type of ensemble. And uh, as a guitarist, 
you know, there were two mythical recordings that I grew up listening to. The first one is uh, Buzz Guitar by Wes Montgomery, and then there's George Benson's Cookbook with Jack McDuff on organ. And this sound always stuck in my ear, and I just wanted to, you know, have a take on it and try to do something hopefully a little bit different, or at least that sounds like myself, you know. This album is very interesting in the fact that you decided to raise money for this project. Did you find it very easy to do that in the, in the, the beginning of this project? So I did it with a Kickstarter, as, uh, as, you, as you may know. And uh, I mean, it wasn't that hard, I have to say. Now, you know, those crowdfunding platform, I think, are, are, are pretty popular. And people, you know, wants to, people want to, to collaborate and help musicians. So it was actually very exciting to see who would react to this campaign and uh, all the all the nice messages and you know all the encouragement that I got from people that I barely knew you know through Facebook and all the social media you get to you get to see who really follows you and who who's into it so no it wasn't a hard process really it was very fun it was a lot of work you know responding to the people and getting all the rewards and all that stuff but it was it wasn't too hard no it was actually a lot of fun this album you recorded a lot of your originals, but there's also a couple standards on here. Tell me about the writing process for your your trio. Well, um, I knew who I was writing for, you know, for Jake Sherman on organ and Jake Goldbass on drums. So I knew, you know, what they what they could do and what, where they sound good. You know, where, what are their their strengths. So that helped me a lot. And uh, I just wrote pretty quickly. I wrote the the whole thing in about a month, I think. And Cyril, who sings a song on the record, also helped me because she wrote this song called "20 Years." She wrote the melody and the lyrics, and I just had the chords. But basically, it's just yeah. I had sort of a, a distant sound in the back of my head, and day after day, I was just trying to get closer to it and put it on the chart. But that's how I did. You know, coming into a jazz trio, you're working with an organ which does maybe two or three different things yeah. as far as how it sounds with the bass, yeah. the low end, and then you got the drums, and then a lot of what you're doing, you're out in the front. Tell me about your guitar influences on this. Again, you said that Wes Montgomery and George Benson were very, very important to all of this. Yeah. I mean, they're important to any guitarist on this planet, you know, any jazz guitarist. But uh, I tried to put also a little bit of everything that I like, you know, a little bit of folk music. So that's why I played acoustic guitar on the record as well. And I tried a little bit of pop somehow, I don't know, a little bit of also more rhythmic music, you know, like because I love African music, West African stuff. So I tried, hopefully it will show in the music. And also a bit of classical music. There's this song, Thousand Leaves, on the record that's inspired by... Uh, a classical piece by Ravel entitled "Le Tombeau de Couperin," and I was, I had, you know, I had that in my ear too. So I tried to all those little ingredi ingredients. So you know, that that's why that's where also the title comes from.
from Paris, and it's very interesting how this music called jazz enters many people's psyche. Tell me how jazz and the guitar started in your life. Well, the guitar started because of blues and B.B. Uh, King, I think. He was the guy that they made me want to pick up the guitar. And then jazz came gradually, you know, because I was listening to a lot of rock and, and pop music like any teenager, you know, metal, anything, you know. And then I got a couple of records, Wes, Pat Metheny were the first one, Charlie Christian. And then gradually, uh, you know, I understood that jazz was also a great platform, a great, uh, a great way to learn music, you know, to understand the mechanisms of music and then and the whole culture behind it. Just I just love, you know. I read all, you know. I remember as a teenager reading uh, "Really the Blues" by Milton Mes Mesro, and they they really catch, caught my attention too. So those things, you know, slowly adding up. That's how I think uh, I became a jazz musician, if I may say. You know, you've only been in the United States since 2008, and you've accomplished a lot. You're the music director for Surreal, and you're doing, you're fronting your own band. How easy and how hard has it been for you to, one, understand the language, American language, the, the English, the King's English, and two, when you're at the new school studying the music, I bet the discipline, the, there were different types of disciplines that you had to kind of get acclimated to when you got here. Yeah. Well, it's funny that you mention English, because that, that was one of the big struggles in the beginning, as you may still hear my accent and everything. I'm not very assimilated yet, <laughs> but uh, I mean, it was, it was fun, yeah, I couldn't understand anything. I went, no one would understand me, and gradually uh, I got to speak better and understand the people and connect with them more, you know. But music was a big help for that, you know, because at least that I could speak a little better. So that helped me connect with the other people. And then about the discipline, I mean, new school was pretty relaxed, I have to say, you know. But there were amazing teachers, really amazing. And uh, I would say would maybe like people like uh, Robert Sadin, that had, was a great conductor and producer also. And uh, well, the only discipline I had to apply myself to was with the uh, English classes. <laughs> that was the, the tough thing for me. But all the rest was really fun and really, really fascinating. So I didn't have to... To have such a discipline, you know, I was just, I was just in love with music and in love with the studies. So that's all I did. What do you tell other young musicians from around the world that want to come to New York City? Because somehow, some way, as a musician or a publicist or a composer, you have to cut your teeth here in New York City. You've been doing all right. I've been doing okay. I don't know if I have any advice. You know, I'm still trying to figure it out myself, but. Uh, I think just come and see, you know. Most of the people I know, they just fall in love with the city. Musicians, you know, in particular, because it's crazy. I mean, the amount of amazing music you can expose yourself to every night, every day. You know, the amount of musicians, the opportunities. It's incredible, you know. It's, it's a big city, it's a fast city. That, you know, that can be hard for some people. But if you're young and, you, and you're a musician, I think those things shouldn't scare you. So I would just say, come, come and, and enjoy it, because it's... It's an amazing place to learn music. Your passport has been pretty, pretty extensive here the last year, two years. Yeah. Surreal has been very, very, very important on the jazz scene as one of the up-and-coming jazz vocalists. Tell me how you guys first met and the partnership as far as music and friendship. Well, we first randomly met in Paris in uh, the summer of 2010. I was playing a gig with an organ player, actually, I just remember now. And she, she, she stepped in into this club and we just, you know, say hi. And then a few months later, I went to this little session in Brooklyn and she was there again. And I heard her sing and I was hooked up, you know, right from the first note. And then she was playing here. I remember she was playing with uh, Joel Fram and Anna Cohen here and Spike Wilner. Here at Smalls I came and once again, you know, I fell in love with her voice and, you know, I just wanted to play with her, so she had that gig in the in a Soho at the time every Saturday. So I would just try to hang out there as much as I could, and you know, being both French, that that helped the connection too. And we we just started playing more and more, working more and more. And when she when she did the, her album, it's a good day, that was very guitar centered. She asked for my help, so that's how we started working together, and then became uh, great friends and. Uh, and even more, some people say. 
You know, I, I've noticed that your relationship with her, I mean, like tonight, you know, she, she, she really feels the spirit when it comes to the music as far as jazz. And what is it about her voice that really kind of makes people go like, wow, just get locked into what she's doing? Yeah. Well, I don't... She just she has a beautiful instrument. That's one sure thing. But I think what uh, what people love with her is her honesty. You know, she's really sincere to the moment. She really, and as mu as a musician, we can really feel it because she's a hundred percent connected with us and with the audience. So, and that creates spontaneity. You know, spontaneity. She's very spontaneous, and uh, I think that's what people. Love. It's not so much about her instrument. I mean, she has wonderful ear. You know, I could go for hours, incredible ears, and she's always on the spot. But I think she's really, really sincere, which is very hard to achieve. And that's what every jazz musician tries to achieve, and, and she's she's got that for sure. I think.